What's up guys, it's been a minute since the last video I posted on this channel and I wanted to come back here today and and I wanted to come back with a new video today showing you a little bit more about this solar charge controller that seems to be very popular content on my channel all things to do with solar here uh, this is a very basic solar charge controller you can buy them for 15 bucks this specific one is rated up to 30 amps um, 12 or 24 volt 50 volt PV voltage input power 390 watts 78 780 watts on 24 volt um, yeah basic very standard universal solar charge controller and the reason why my content is so popular on this charge controller on my channel is because of these user manual instructions that are garbage they they're very hard to understand and so a lot of people get confused with these and if I can give you one of my best tips for these charge controllers if you're having an issue with them if you hooked up the solar panels to these connections first first this charge controller will think that the solar panel is actually the battery and it will treat it so and so you have to remember to always hook up the battery connections to the solar charge controller first before adding solar the solar panels or the load um, anyways get that stuff out of the way today specifically I want to talk to you guys about setting the work load and how that functions um, in fact I had someone reach out to me and he has a aerator that he uses in his lake and um, he's got a really cool setup he sent me a video checked it out he's using one of these controllers he actually used another one as well but he's been having some issues being able to figure out how to have it run during the day only only during the day instead of at night or whatever because he's relying purely on the sun and so that's what i want to get into today how to set up these solar charge controllers so they can operate at the times that you want a load to draw from them and so there is a little bit of piece of information here in the instruction manuals in, in the instruction manual and there's a couple different options that we'll get into but first I should explain that there are six main different menu screens in this controller um, in order to play around with the settings to get it dialed in how you want and these are the six different screens and there's three buttons on here the menu button on the very left and then up and down to change the values so the first screen is the main display that shows you the voltage, um, if the load is on, if the solar is charging the battery and whatnot. The second screen shows you your float voltage setting. The third screen is your settings for discharge reconnect, which when the, when, when the batteries get down to a certain voltage they'll it'll just stop supplying power to the load and so the discharge reconnect is a voltage you set at which the solar charge controller will turn the load back on to start working again um, and so that fourth screen in the menu here is discharge stop which should have been the screen before but anyways the discharge stop is typically a lower voltage then the discharge reconnect because it's at that point at that voltage that you set that the controller will stop providing power to the pump or whatever load you're working with and it's the reconnect voltage that brings the load back up to speed and then the fifth screen is the main one we're going to be talking about today which is called the work mode screen and that's the one that you can adjust um, for when and how long the load is running and then the sixth screen is for the type of battery so when you've got your solar charge controller you connect it to your battery first 
And then you hook up your solar panels and your load just in the bottom there. Very easy to connect wires into there. Once you have that all set up and you go into the work mode screen, you just by tapping this button until you get to that fifth screen, there's a couple options you can do. So the first one is if you leave that value set to 24H or for 24 hours, that means when you turn the load function on the main screen, the first screen, it will consistently provide power to whatever um, you're trying to power. And um, it will just go forever until the batteries run out of power or you manually turn the button off for the load. The second option here is a value that you can choose between one and 23 hours. And it says here for load on after sunset and close after setting hours. So if you, so let's say sunset is at 7 p.m and you want to power some Christmas lights, and you choose five hours, you set the value at five, then that means at sunset, somewhere around 7 p.m. when the solar panels are no longer producing power to the battery, then the load will turn on for five hours until midnight. And you keep in mind that if the sunset changes like if it starts setting at six o'clock, then your lights will turn off at 11 p.m. So, so that's how the second option works. The third option is if you set it to zero hours, and that means that it will provide power to whatever you're running from dusk to dawn. So right as that sun sets and their solar panels stop producing power, it will turn the load on and run whatever you want until the sun rises again in the morning and starts producing power on the solar panels. And so that's dusk to dawn. So those are the three different options you have on the work mode screen, which is that fifth screen um, to be able to run whatever you need um, when typically around the parameters when the sun is no longer producing power from the, via the solar panels to the battery. Now, in this other case that this gentleman reached out to me about asking for some help, he has a pump, an aerator pump in his pond that he wants to run during the day. And so these parameters aren't really set up for during the day. So if you want something to run just during the day while the sun is shining, then what you go ahead and do, it, like, so, unfortunately, the only way I see it working well for being able to run a load during the day is just using the parameters, the voltage settings from the discharge stop and the discharge reconnect. So, in other words, you want to, so, in his setup, he doesn't have a mega battery supply that can have the pump running throughout the night. So because of that, he wants to protect his batteries um, in such a way that it won't, you know, won't ruin the batteries and will provide power to that pump. And so what if you want to do something similar to that effect, what you want to do is just set the proper voltages for um, those parameters of the discharge stop and reconnect for the load to run properly. I'm using some fancy terms here where I'm trying to dumb this down to make it make more sense just as I'm walking through the, the, the idea here. But essentially, so if you, you've got your controller all set up, hooked up and whatnot, you want to go to, um, you want to scroll through the screens. You want to have your float voltage set at a proper amount. Everyone has their own opinion. The book here shows 13.7 volts for a float voltage. Um, but you will kind of want to focus more on the discharge reconnect and the discharge stop. And so the dish, 
discharge stop, once again, that plays into effect once the battery gets down to a certain voltage. And once it hits that voltage, the controller stops providing power to whatever you're running. And so here they've got it at 10.7, but I would never go that low on a battery. Um, I would only have it between 11.6 and 12 volts, potentially leaning more towards 12 volts. So if that battery ever goes below 12 volts, then the controller turns off the power and it's, and the battery is no longer, or, and the battery is no longer draining power to whatever you're running. And so however long it takes between, for, for the solar panels to recharge the battery up to a, the reconnect voltage that you set, which here they've got 12.6, which would be fine. Um, if you have it set at 12.6, then at that point, whether it takes half an hour or a couple hours, it's only at that point that you set of the voltage that the, the controller will then uh, start supplying more power to the, the load that you're running. So, so, if it's, so if your reconnect is 12.6, your discharge stop is at 12 then if your batteries are you know 13 14 volts and throughout the day it's running that load and it starts going down in voltage because it's a cloudy day or there's not enough battery power then once it hits that voltage of 12 volts for the discharge stop it'll stop running the load and then it will reconnect once those solar panels bring back the battery voltage up to 12.6 or whatever voltages you set for those two parameters. And so what I, what that's unfortunately, that's, that's just the best. The only way I see you could use this controller in that way to still protect the batteries um, from dying. Um, and, but yet still be able to have the pump or load run as much as it can possibly. And so, because unfortunately they, they should have built in another setting that you could have the load turn on, um, purely between sunrise and sunset during those peak hours that the sun is producing power. But According to this manual, um, I don't. There, I'm not aware of a mode for that uh, to allow the controller to run purely during the sun. You know, sun producing hours. Um, yeah. So, anyways, I hope that makes sense. Let me know your opinions, questions, thoughts. I hope this is helpful. Um, just a matter of, you know, translating this manual into some helpful directions here. But essentially, you want to go to that fifth screen in here, and it, it's there's numbers between 0 and 24 that you can adjust. And if you want to run during the day, you know, all the time, I would just set that to 24H. Um, and turn the load on with those voltage parameters and that should allow you to run your load as m much as possible um, without harming the battery if you set the right voltage parameters there and um, yeah so besides that you have the other option of running between sunset and sunrise during the night and that's zero H and then also however many hours you want to run at sunset um, until the next day between 1 and 23 hours um, or just the 24 hours that runs around the clock as long as the battery voltage is in the proper setting. And so honestly if you do set it up that way like if you set it a high enough discharge stop, then it's and you don't have a large battery bank. As soon as you, as soon as the sun sets and it's no longer producing power, 
it's going to cut the load off uh, to prevent the battery from uh, damage. And so essentially it won't start running that load again until there's enough power, which is sunrise, until, until that sun is able to recharge those batteries. And then that load will start up again. Same with like a cloudy day or something like that. So anyways, that's what we're talking about today. I know this is kind of mumble jumble of lots of different thoughts, but uh, I just wanted to post that and I hope it was a very helpful video. Please let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.